Um, hello, viewers. As uh, Dr. Majila has told you, um, this seminar will be presented. I intend to approach it um, with two slides as I've uh, been prepared. Um, this first slide uh, just um, introduces us to uh, the the seminar, and um, I will go back to the other slide that now picks up the presentation from last year's uh, perspective. Um, one will say, what is research? Um, Research is, is a systematic scientific procedure of collecting and analyzing data in order to investigate the truthfulness or otherwise of an assumption or perception or a hypothesis. Um, with, with that, you, you can now begin to investigate or ask what is the purpose of research. The primary aim of research is to generate new knowledge, information or a set of data to validate or disprove an a priori assumption or an a priori hypothesis. Knowledge or information thus get generated is used to bridge existing knowledge or information gap. Research is used to produce new products or in new or new ideas that would help improve on existing practice or existing product. In the case of say market research, you know you you conduct a, some kind of market research and then uh, see whether customers are enjoying or appreciating of finding your product useful and or not and decide thereafter to make changes depending on the information you would have gathered from customers. Now, let me go back to the other, to the other slide and begin to interrogate the kinds of research and uh, how you deal with them. Um, as um, we have mentioned earlier, last year, about this time, or in July to be exact, we had uh, talked about research, the type of research and uh, research methods, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, for instance, in the introduction, which we talked about last last year, we I try to establish the fact that uh, within the introduction is where, sorry, uh, where you have to look at the background information or circumstances that prompted the need for the research. Then the perception or the hypothesis that you that you have imagined or you have developed which will guide you in the process of uh, doing research because I, you've mentioned I've mentioned that uh, research is a step by step systematic way of investigate investigating a hypothesis and uh, you do so by collecting data and analyzing the data to prove or disprove that your perception so in the ap apart from Within the same introduction, you can 
now have the problem statement after you have stated the hypothesis or established what their perception is, then the objectives and organization of the research will follow. Let me talk directly on, uh, well, I will, I'll talk about the details when I go to the main slide. I'm just trying to bring you up to speed about what we had discussed or where we had, what we had done that last year. Now, next is a theoretical concept. A theoretical concept will normally present a discussion around the theoretical underpinnings of the research you want to conduct. It sometimes it could be just a, a deliberation or an expose or illustration of a theory or a model that the, the research will handle or the research is based on. You want to put theoretically that this model will, will act like this and um, show the process of using the model and what the expected outcome will be. This will help you determine at the end of the day or guide you in the process of the research whether you are on course or not. Now, of course, um, we talked about the literature review. I will, I will discuss that later in the next slide. The methodology every, will include the types of data to collect, which will be either primary or secondary. I will talk more on, the, on, the, on those. Methods of data collection, whether you are going to do some surveys or going to do some personal interviews or whether you prepare questionnaire and send out and expect returns. <coughs> and <fine coughs> excuse me. And finally, <coughs> based on uh, the data you've collected, <coughs> you can then analyze and uh, discuss the results. Now, um, I want to talk briefly on types of research. There are two main types of research, basic and applied research. Basic research simply is more theoretical or often based on ev evaluation of a situation or it is normally what you do to put out fresh knowledge out there in the public domain. It is conducted to add information or knowledge to an existing body of work. It can also provide an evaluation of services or programs or policy as the case may be. Whereas applied research is more empirical you are supposed to collect empirical data and then uh, <clears throat> the purpose of applied research is to provide a solution to a specific problem. It also serves to show any cause or effect relationships. Applied research is focused on a specific topic and not just a general topic. It is it zeroes in on a particular uh, situation. For instance, if we decide to investigate, like what are the factors that cause HIV, you simply make an assumption, a hypothesis. You can collect secondary data and then analyze it, and then put up put out information of, based on your results that um, it could be due to A, B, C, D, uh, alcohol, alcoholism, recklessness in um, sexual relationship, etc. But that's basic research. 
But if you are now talking about why why HIV is limited to young women of age 20 to 35, then you have you now see your target population is this age class. You collect data on them, empirical data, analyze that, and then begin to solve that problem that is limited to this young group of uh, women. So that's kind of distinguishes basic research from applied research. Now, what are the research, major research methodologies? There are two main types, the qualitative research method and the quantitative research method. Briefly, uh, the qualitative method generally does not generate numerical data. It is more of a relational relationship between variables that um, you can only describe either verbally or in writing without it having to tinker with uh, numbers. It is mainly used to investigate people's beliefs, experiences, attitudes, behaviors, and uh, interactions. Also, it is also called market research in some, in some clients because information on data is uh, obtained through oral and uh, open-ended uh, communications where you just uh, throw a question open to a respondent and they expect the person to take all the time to express himself or herself uh, about that uh, question that you have posed. It's um, a, a method that is used in evaluating like a new product or a planned product in a <clears throat> as a market strategy. A good example of a qualitative research method is the focus group discussion. A lot of um, a lot of uh, students, uh, based on the experience I I have, uh, uh, just use uh, this uh, focus group uh, discussion. And um, briefly, I will talk about focus group discussion is very commonly used in qualitative research. It normally takes up a group of six to ten uh, respondents, according to BAT. Um, from there, from this uh, handful, this uh, sm small sample of, popula of the population, you can now, um, you can now estimate what the population will be using this sample and this is the 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 flaw that uh, focus group has in the sense that the small size fraction uh, the small size of the sample can be so unrepresentative that it cannot be used to draw an inference about a, a bigger population now, in short, focus group discussions seek answers to the, the such questions as why this research, what is intended or what is the expected uh, benefit or result, and how are we going to uh, go about getting these uh, benefits or applying these benefits as the case may be. However, it is very useful for market research or the new product, like I have mentioned, because it can, it can be used to test new concepts or evaluate proposed or new policies. For instance, um, in, in case of education, you can decide uh, uh, this uh, focus group discussion can help uh, to change or modify or even develop a new set of cur uh, curriculum or a new curriculum, so to speak. And um, 
here we, we, we see the need for evaluating the curriculum periodically in order to update it to the point where the respondents would have uh, highlighted as either gaps existing or some kind of policy being inadequate. And uh, in focus group, the, the idea of selecting the participants, of course, requires that all members of the all key stakeholders within the population will be selected so as to make sure that the interests are diversified and repre uh, fully represented. The a second form of methodology that is used for for qualitative research is the, the triangulation. Triangulation involves the use of multiple methods or data sources in qualitative research to develop a comprehensive understanding of, of a phenomenon or some phenomena as, as a pattern has indicated. It is also viewed as a qualitative research strategy to test validity or reliability of results through the convergence of information from different sources. That is, if you now um, have done some research or some investigation and uh, you want to validate that, then you carry out that set of that same investigation from a different source of data or use a different method so as to confirm the validity of your first uh, your first uh, discovery if you will or your first findings um so triangulation is simply just diversify your method and your source of data to be able to uh, make sure that there is a synergy between or there is a congruence uh, in the in the two investigations. Now let me, having now talked briefly about uh, uh, about uh, the qualitative research, let's now go to, and then let's go to the other slide that discuss more of quantitative research. Fine. Um, before, before I go into, into this, let me uh, share my experience um, with you guys. I found that of late or in some, in some areas, students, or researchers often do not understand what their role is in conducting research. If a student is preparing to do a master's thesis or a PhD thesis, or even a researcher is interested in research, it has, it has been found that uh, most students don't have a good grasp of what their research is all about or how to go about their research in the sense that um, they don't have basic theoretical knowledge about research. The, what I to prescribe is that a student who wants to undergo a research must have basic knowledge of statistics, 
um, technical writing and research. These three areas come together in handling a research methodology and then research. Without that, without this knowledge, being able to understand what is the perception, what is the hypothesis, how do I go about it, then the, the, the danger is that uh, a student might run into a situation where he either gets data and doesn't, at the end of the day, doesn't know how to analyze it. I've had the experience of a lady who came to me asking for assistance with a set of data. I looked at the data set and they are all explanatory or predicting variable predictors. There is nothing to predict. There is no dependent variable to measure or estimate. So um, I, I, it becomes very difficult to help such a person. The person needs to go back and then uh, redefine the the work and be able to understand how to collect the data so that the data will be uh, beneficial or useful for analysis and then uh, even others don't go as far as collecting data themselves some simply want to do a, a study maybe on a subject say uh, HIV, and then they, they outsource it to a, a statistician or somebody outside, pay the person money, and then um, uh, uh, the person does everything, collects data, writes up, and then they, the, in, the danger is that in most cases, the student may not be able to defend that thesis, even though it's supposed to have been produced by him or her. So um, I, I, I know of, uh, there was also a case of uh, uh, someone who was uh, doing uh, who was doing research on public health and um, was being exploited by uh, a statistician pay him lots and lots of money at the end of the day whatever the statistician put together for him he he couldn't defend it and he was an, uh, an online student for an overseas university and he couldn't defend it and um, uh, failed the the exam the first time before he approached me to to for guidance which i had to do for him to get the the right that get in the right direction and eventually manage to pass the second time around so all i'm saying is that students even if you need statistical assistance it is simply for the statistical aspect of the work the research aspect should be your responsibility and you should try and have sufficient knowledge on that to be able to not only interpret and defend the thesis, but also to be able to write and put out knowledge in the public domain based on your research. Having said that, let's now um, look at uh, quantitative methods of research. These are forms of research which use numerical data, for example, population, percentages, means, etc., to analyze specific observations and conditions to produce results in form of numbers, figures, or illustrations uh, with which to make some prediction or draw some inference thereafter. There are scientific methods of using mathematical, there are scientific methods of using mathematical models to prove, disprove, or validate assumptions, hypotheses, or theories uh, made about certain conditions or phenomena. The major merit of 
quantitative research lies in its precision with respect to data collection, data analysis, and data presentation, as, as well as uh, the, presentation, the presentation of the results. However, the main pitfall of uh, quantitative research is the difficulty in its application in analyzing many social and human behavior issues, which are not amenable to numerical documentation or quantification. For example, drunkenness between males and females, courtesy of uh, airline uh, crew staff, or appreciation of spoken language or languages or culture. Um, this is this is um, this is um, true anyway. But I I will uh, also uh, uh, point out here that um, it is it is not actually the it is not actually the these uh, social data. These days, there are ways of uh, applying social data by giving them codes, you know, as we, we come to when we get to questionnaire de design. But uh, this reminds me of a student here, a, a, a UNISA student who I was supervising on uh, environmental management. And then um, the university normally will uh, let us not feed them, but um, I, we guided, we guided, I guided the, the student. I wouldn't want to disclose anything more than just the fact that uh, the student is from uh, UNISA. Um, I got to the point where the data was now going to be analyzed and then figures, some figures were to be used. And of course, uh, some inferential statistics were was going to be applied. And then the, because the student doesn't have that confidence, maybe because uh, she has not had a, 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 a um, a seminar like this research methodology uh, came to me to say uh, the some of the students are saying because uh, because uh, I mean the way the something the statistical analysis is going uh, it will uh, end up being a BA that she will earn instead of a BSc. I said, my goodness, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Because the, the quantitative model simply, of course, uh, that alone gives uh, her a, a very scientific uh, undertone. And not only that, it is the department you are, you, you, uh, you are coming from that determines the nature of your degree, not necessarily the method of uh, the methodology you used in, uh, in analyzing your data. But, but that is, by the way, but that's, it will tell you how when a student is not confident about what he or she is doing, then he or she can be swayed, uh, blown about like the wind. Because uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, assurance is not there. Now, um, qualitative uh, research I've mentioned before which um, I have uh, tried to present using two popular methodologies, the, the uh, focus group uh, method and then the triangulation. But um, so I here, I, I'm here saying again that um, they use words and relational associations rather than figures to describe the relationship between explanatory and explained variables or between independent and dependent variables. Now, let's now look at the format of research procedure. Um, I, I've told you there is the introduction. I've given a uh, little bit of highlights on what should come on, on the introduction. I, there, there is the background. 
then which I've, I've said it could be a, historic, a historical account of how experience has brought about the need for this research. Then the hypothesis, in this case, in, um, in a quantitative approach, the hypothesis can be in form of uh, the null hypothesis, HO, which states that mu1 is equal to mu2 equals to mu3 equals to mu, mu uh, um, equal to zero, which is called the null hypothesis, as opposed to the alternative hypothesis, which says mu1 is not equal to mu2, not equal to mu3, and not equal to zero. What that means is that you are coming up with a perception that the model, the variables, the, the, the explanatory variables you are including in this model have no significant contribution to the outcome or to what you are trying to estimate. That's the null hypothesis, as opposed to that at least one of the explanatory variables has made a significant contribution in predicting the dependent variable. That's what he's, he's saying. Which, again, if you are using, if you are not using analysis of variance and you are using a, a regression analysis, then it is, you state the null hypothesis as, say, HO uh, BI equal to zero, as opposed to alternative hypothesis that says, uh, um, bi is not equal to zero. The same is saying the same thing that if the null hypothesis is saying that that of all the indep um, the independent variables that you have included, none of them is making any significant contribution to predicting the the dependent variable, as opposed to the alternative hypothesis, which is saying that at least one of them is making a significant contribution to the dependent variable. That is the hypothesis. Now, I want to let you know that research is a continuum. Right from the, the point you, you met the perception, the hypothesis, you are now, every other thing will follow. Uh, se sequentially, you know, and uh, pointing towards that hypothesis which you have stated. For instance, in the problem statement, the problem statement is trying to say that it, there is a gap between the potential outcome and the actual outcome. That is a problem statement. Students are often um, inclined or tempted or naively they think that problem statement is uh, listing the constraints or the challenges that, uh, they, they, that they will meet in the research. No, it is not. It is, and it is a statement that is, tra is trying to say or is stating categorically that there is a gap between the, depend, uh, the potential outcome and the actual outcome. And it is that gap that your, your research is trying to close. Then the objectives will pop out from the attempt to close the gaps. The research questions also will pop out of the um, will be directed at achieving the objective. So you see these things, they follow each other and they derive from right from the original thinking, the hypothesis. Now, um, the literature review, this is a search for existing information and data about the topic of the study with a view to establishing that there is still exists a gap in knowledge which the research intends to fill. 
that's what I've just mentioned. It presents a comprehensive search of studies or works that have been done in the research focused area, which in the mind of the researcher still do not address the perceived problem. Hence, a justification for the study. This is where um, the students again um, err in the sense that they simply begin to list list uh, every every study maybe or the, every publication they have found or seen around this particular topic but the idea of a literature review here is for you to now find out what people have done around very close to the area you are investigating but which they have not done that therefore justifies you to do this research otherwise there is no point to reinventing the wheel if you if what you are trying to do has been done by other people then don't waste time and resources doing wanting to reinvent the wheel you simply you, you are, your mission is to try and find out what ought to have been done but which has not been done that which that your research will try to <clears throat> resolve this is why <clears throat> this is why uh, it's advisable when you review your literature to make sure you, you review current literature in fact not more than 10 years from um, not article published over 10 years from the time you you are doing the research so that you are current you know, make sure that people have not done what you are about to do that that is the reason why your review of literature must be current now uh, one important because in doing research review one thing that um, comes very readily is the the citations and the citation comes with a lot of error of plagiarism plagiarism is uh, the practice of taking someone else's work or idea as one's own it is an academic dishonesty and, and plagiarism detectors these days of course there are uh, plagiarism detecting machines but let me uh, talk to this uh, plagiarism it's not plagiarism does not necessarily mean that you cannot cite other people's work but when you cite other people's work, you have to recognize them. You have to uh, reference them. Otherwise, it becomes plagiarism. If you, if you, if you use their exact language, if you are citing them, you, the idea is for you to use their knowledge or their <clears throat> information and put it to your, your own way rather than copy the, pe the person verbatim then you are plagiarizing that was uh, that author and um, you are guilty of plagiarism i don't know if uh, of course now um another area of uh, importance is conceptual framework or what uh, often called theoretical framework it's a discourse on how and where the model you want to use or adopt has been used. It is more of historical account of the usefulness of the model or technique that you are going to use. It helps to conceptualize in advance the likelihood that the study to be undertaken will, will yield similar and useful outcome that will add new knowledge to uh, the in 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 the knowledge domain so um here again is where 
the student or the intending author, if you like, will look at what approach, what is the approach, what is the model that you want to adopt or adapt depending on um, how complex or how applicable it is. You, if, if you are modifying it, you're adapting it, or you are adopting that very model, you explain its working mechanism and how it will behave in this new dispensation to be able to um, guide you and then possibly guide readers as to what to expect from your work, even, if, even when we have not read the next sections of your work, it's simply from your title and your hypothesis and so on, then we begin to, in the conceptual framework or theoretical framework, we begin to imagine what your work will look like and what likely outcome will emanate from it. Now, um, on methodology, this is where, again, remember that I mentioned that these uh, these phases or steps or stages of uh, the research investigation are sequential and interconnected. So the methodology will now begin to <clears throat> ask questions on how to achieve the objectives which you state you've stated. And you know that objectives derive from the problem statement which you have made, and the problem statement is drawn from the hypothesis you've stated. So on the methodology, um, we look at the methods of data collection. Um, for instance, we have census. Census is where every member of the population is a, a respondent. Uh, if it is um, <coughs> if it is um, finding the age of the inhabitants, and in case of census, you have to count every member of that population. And uh, practically, it is not um, always possible in the sense that the population can be large. And uh, it is also very costly to uh, at, uh, to reach every possible member of that population. Hence, you adopt uh, sampling. Sampling is where you now take part of that population, but pure, purely organized or uh, designed to represent that population. Um, for in for instance, if um, if you are you have a, a population of one hundred people, as me one thousand, and uh, financially it is not possible to to talk to or to use every member of the population, you take a sample of that population. A rule of thumb is about 25% of, of the population as a sample is always uh, acceptable. And, um, and that 25%, now how do you select the 25%? This is where uh, sampling methods come into play. Um, one is simple random sampling. Uh, you apply simple random sampling when the population is homogeneous. Homogeneous in the sense that every member of that population has fair and equal chance of being selected. That means um, they are uh, selecting A and not B has no um, significant difference uh, from selecting B and not A. In other words, any one of them can, 
can be selected, can be represented. That is for homogeneous population. And the um, example of homogeneous population, you can say uh, a classroom, a, a class of um, um, grade A or, or grade 12, let's say, a class of grade 12 students in a boys school. Boys school, not, not mixed, or girls school, not mixed. They are homogeneous because they belong to the same class. They are all boys or they are all girls. And should, being in the same class, they should be about the same age. So they, can, they are taken as homogeneous. And that's when you apply simple random sampling. A purposive or judgment sampling is now where you use your discretion. You use your discretion to um, select because they are not homogeneous. There are old people there, there are males, there are females, and there, there are very young ones. Also, there are people that are, have never been to school. There are people that are, have tertiary degrees and all that. So because of being heterogeneous, you have to now use purposive sample. We have to select from the old people. We have to select from the young ones. We have to select from those that, that are not educated enough and those that are highly educated. You know, that is purposive. You are now using personal judgment to select the sample. Now, systematic sampling, uh, again, is more like um, a systematic way of selecting people selecting people maybe they, 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 are, they are not homogeneous but can be stratified or in into a particular category like um, if they are if they are men all through it don't, it, don't, it doesn't matter what their ages and um, qualifications are, but you have to arrange them in a systematic order. Like if you are if you are using age to 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 arrange them, then you put the youngest then to the youngest in front, the oldest behind, and then they are lined up. Then you systematically uh, uh, select using maybe a random number a random number table to pick um, whom to to start selecting. Maybe if you if you select um, if the random number table gives you number two, then you begin to select every. Assuming you want to, uh, if there are hundred people and there are ten. There are 100 people and you, you want to select 10 people, then it means every 10 person you will select. In other words, you will now systematically, if the random number table say falls on one, if you select the first one, then the next person you select is number 11, number 21, 31, and so on all the way to uh, the, the distance until uh, 91 and you get your 10, 10 samples as you want to say. So systematic sampling is simply uh, an order, the system or the sampling method you use when you have ordered population. Now cluster sampling is simply like the name says, clusters. They exist in clusters like hamlets in the rural area. These people live uh, on the side of uh, this stream, the, the, on the southern side of this stream. These other ones live on the northern side. These other ones live uh, 
beyond, you know, they live in clusters. So you within clusters, you select again um, the number de depending on uh, the number you want to select. Now, having now uh, gotten your samples based on whatever method, you can now look at the data types. The primary data is normally um, data that you collect in the field, physically, empirical, and um, very current, as opposed to secondary data, which is data from published work. It, it is not you that collected it, it is published. You just lift it up from, from wherever it is published. And um, those are the two main types of data you, you have in a population, in, a, in, in the sampling or the, excuse me. In the in the sampling uh, process. Now, what are the data collection methods? There are several. A survey where you move and, and collect and collect information from people. Um, there is the oral interview. With, with or without questionnaire. There is also review of published work. You, <coughs> you gather information or data from some published work. And physical observation where you simply go to the study area, you walk about and uh, observe things, and put, put in for uh, whatever data you you have collected or you are collecting on a, a notebook or or just um committed to memory if you if you are that sharp in um, memory recall and so on and so forth now this is an a, a very important aspect of <coughs> research questionnaire design, because remember, remember that you are, you are talking to objectives that you have uh, uh, set, and the, the questionnaire you design will, <clears throat> will emanate or will, will be designed based on the research questions. In fact, um, research questions are simply from, created, you create research questions from the objectives. If you, if you state the objective, like if, if you have, the objective is finding out whether there is any significant difference between the performance of a student by virtue of uh, you want you want to assess the performance of a, a graduate student in the university based on the matric result or whether it's a male or a female or whether uh, the mother or the father is um, a graduate or the kind of degree the, 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 any of the parents. Let's say the mother, <laughs> because uh, it is always mothers these days that uh, um, sometimes children get closer to their mothers and mothers take help them with homework and all that. So you may say, um, you know, 
let, let's see the, the qualification of the mother, you know. So um, you, you may ask questions on, uh, um, were you a male or a female? Are you, is your mother a graduate? If, if graduate, what level of degree does she have? BA or first degree, second degree, third degree, as the case may be, and so on and so forth. And you ask for in any class, boys, girls, and uh, you know, in a particular institution, a university, or in a, in a sub, uh, particular subject, like here, I think I've used the example of the score in statistics uh, and so on. So, in design a questionnaire, you can now have either an open ended questionnaire mostly used in uh, qualitative research or a coded rest of, uh, a questionnaire normally used in quantitative research. So and uh, in questionnaire design, you ask questions. <coughs> questions in the questionnaire in this type of research are designed to have numerical values as answers. Real values should be provided where applicable, e.g. cost of production of a particular product is say 300,000 or whatever rand. Otherwise, codes should be used where exact data cannot be used or is not available. For example, the gender of a, a, of a producer, or if you are looking at a production of some products, whether the person is a male or a female. So this is where you use the principle of the dummy, dummy variables. A dummy variable is an, an observation A, if it is, if the observation is A, you give it a one, if it is not A, but B, you give B a zero. That is, a, a dummy variable is zero. For instance, in the case of male and female, if, 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 if the, <coughs> the interviewee is a male, you give a figure of one. And then if it's a female, you give a figure of zero. The above method is termed the use of dummy variables. A level of uh, uh, academic attainment of a, of a director or lecturer can be BA, MA, or PhD. BA, if you give BA a uh, value of one, MA value of two, and PhD value of three. So this is coding and um, In that, in, that, in that way, you can easily, you save time, it, it, it's coded questionnaire saves time and uh, sometimes easier to an, an, analyze in the sense that these days uh, with um, modern technology, you easily put, put in the figures and then they do the rest of for you. They continue. Now, questions are open-ended or made to be answered in words in the case of qualitative, uh, qualitative research, research design. Enough space is provided for the respondent to have room to express, for the respondents to have enough room to express themselves. For example, you can ask, what is the highest qualification of the heads of departments in the faculty? Then you can pick, you, you can write all the, you can write list all the departments, list whoever is the head and the, his or her qualification and so on. So the, the open-ended question allows the respondent to express 
himself or herself, as the case may be. But if it was like decoding, uh, simply you, you ask if, if the, the qualification is B, A, M, A, so you simply put number one, two, three, as the case may be. You know, if it is in the case of quantitative uh, methods. Uh, other examples could be, do you think that uh, there are more males? Oops, sorry. Do you think that there are more males in the M, that is master's program, than in the doctorate program? in the faculty you know the case me so you you again you again tell stories as, as for as long as you wish as opposed to writing a, a, a one for male zero for women in the a, a, in a dummy variable approach now um one thing about questionnaire design is make it as direct as possible, targeting the, the objectives or research questions you have derived from the objectives. Um, make it direct, crispy, and uh, to the point. And don't prepare a very lengthy questionnaire. Um, when, when you prepare a very lengthy questionnaire, if you, if, if you come into somebody's office or somebody's home to fill a, a three, four page questionnaire, the person will not have all the time in the world to respond to you. And uh, the, the, the consequence of preparing a clumsy and lengthy questionnaire is either the person tells you I don't have time or um, you, you may not get the attention of the person if you are if you are the if you are calling on if if you the researcher and uh, you are asking questions lasting for too long the you get so much repulsion from respondents. So make the questionnaire as direct and as brief as possible. In fact, uh, another rule of thumb says maximum of one hour question. Even one hour is too much. It is too long. It, it personally, if I these days, if I'm feeling ordinary forms, one page forms, I feel so nostalgic to fill lengthy forms and all that. I would rather just um, pass or fill a form that will not take me more than five minutes. So remember this, <coughs> this kind of fatigue or resentment exists in 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 people they have their businesses to handle and so you you have to bear with the person and the, make the present the questionnaire as excuse me as short and as direct as possible to get the attention of the respondent <clears throat> now questionnaire pre-testing Pre-test the questionnaire in a similar but distant location. Finalize the questionnaire incorporating necessary addendum and cor corrections that would arise from the questionnaire pre-testing exercise. Ensure the questionnaire is not too long, so such that the researcher loses the attention of the respondent. A rule of thumb suggests a maximum of one hour per questionnaire. Now, pre <clears throat> mentioned uh, by the length of the questionnaire, uh, the, the direct nature of, of the questionnaire and uh, trying to 
minimize time wasting to, re to capture the attention of the respondent. In, in pre-testing questionnaire, they, it is so important that after designing your questionnaire, you might miss some, some aspects that are very vital. And pre-testing questionnaire will help you either remember or rephrase, rephrase your questionnaire to address the, the real world or the field situation. So if you're doing a questionnaire on, um, a, a, again, uh, the performance of, uh, of students in a particular subject, in a, a in a university, find a, a, a similar university, a, a university with similar program, and pre-test your questionnaire over there, and refine it before you come to apply it in the in the university that you have intended. This is a useful way of capturing all possible information in the that should be in the questionnaire before, before you uh, uh, farm the questionnaire. Otherwise, you find that if you, if you have not done that, you take the questionnaire on pre-tested and go into the field and you begin to see, notice uh, some gaps that you should have filled if you had pre-tested the questionnaire. Now, the, in, in design of experiment, um, two, two major, two major techno, if you like, technological, analytical technology are used these days. The, the analysis of variance for mostly biological biological tests, but also even in quantitative um, uh, <clears throat> social science social science um, research analysis of variance is very important because it tells you the goodness of fit of the model you have adopted and uh, whether uh, the goodness of fit makes it suitable or not suitable for prediction. So analysis of variance is very popular. For example, one can investigate the effect of different levels of funding on research output of different departments in the faculty. In a faculty, in a, in a faculty of an institution, here research output can be measured by a number of published works, books, journals, or articles. So, if you will now take in research output as the dependent variable or ex, the the <coughs> estimated variable, then the levels. will be in terms of actual annual disbursement of funds or over, over time. You, you can now measure research output by the level of funding given to the, the university. Um, sorry, given to the, the, the department. You are measuring the performance of universities at the time of of departments as determined by num number of publications, by the amount of funding they receive by, by year. So the aim is to estimate whether there will be any significant difference in the mean performance of departments as determined by the amount of funding. Other predictors or explanatory variables such as staff strength, or students' involvement in research could be included. 
So if you if you are using a single uh, a, a single say a regression for in, uh, for instance in this case, if you are using a single regression, you are using only one independent variable, which is funding. But you can include other variables like um, student involvement in research or the strength of uh, the staff strength, whether these people have uh, the kind of staff they have, both in number and quality, so to speak. You can include as many other variables which you think will contribute to improved performance as measured by the number of publications. Now, um, in a biological, in a biological design, we can have different forms of uh, experimental design. There should be there, there are randomized design, randomized block design, completely randomized, and all that. But uh, for simplicity's sake, let's look at a randomized block design. If there is a perceived reason that the experimental materials are not homogeneous, it will be necessary to divide them into blocks. First, a, ran a, a randomized design. If experimental materials are homogeneous, you don't, dis you don't discriminate. Therefore, you can have a randomized design in which you take, uh, you, you will take performance as uh, the dependent variable and then the, the treatments as the independent variable. In this case, uh, performance is uh, um, scores, that is a uh, performance in the in terms of school uh, publications and then the treatment funding. So you simply randomize, you, there is no difference between these departments, they all run under the same faculty and so you take, you take uh, a randomized design. But if there are differences in departments, maybe some are scientific, some are arts and all that, all the others are uh, simply administrative or no, administrative won't come in because we are talking of publications. So the, in that case, you block, you, you have a block design, a randomized block design in which you you treat you treat separate departments separately. Example in the performance of groups due to amount of funding, different departments can be taken as blocks, like different blocks. In this case, the difference in the different departments represent blocks, implying that there could be differences in the mean performance, not just because of difference different levels of funding, but due to different departments. This is, so you are looking at different, significant difference due to funding and significant difference differences due to departments, as opposed to just funding for all departments as randomized and randomized block being funding, how it differs performance, how it differs based on funding and based on departments. So this, uh, this is a form of design. And then of course, you, you crank out the, the you feed this, these things into the computer and the, the computer prints result, uh, results showing coefficients that are significant at different levels of probability but that will will come to in 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 the state to come 
some um, uh, descriptive statistics, statistical methods. Um, the basic, the basic methods, descriptive statistics, which also are still quantitative, include tables, charts, um, in, in which they have two different forms of charts: Gantt chart, bar chart, and then. Um, or oh, even three, three different line charts, three different forms. And then a histogram. Uh, we will illustrate these, uh, these uh, different forms of descriptive statistics in the section that follows. For instance, in, the, a, a, table, in, in a table format, you can have a table that shows a student's scores um matrix scores or something or statistics in the, the example i gave about um the, the the performance of a student in statistics class in the university whether it is based on uh, uh, on the matrix score before entering the university this is a simple regression a simple regression analysis and then um, you you present that on a table and then um, you can now crank this in a in a, a statistical analysis model like like a single a single single variable statistical analysis a simple regression analysis, then you come up with whatever results. Then I talked, <coughs> I, I talked about the gang chart. Gang chart in, 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 in research helps to put the researcher on at a lot on course on what time he or she has to perform what operation? I can use this as a, as a pointer. For, for, for instance, um, to, to, to be precise on time and to be guided by, by, by time, what the the student prepares a Gantt chart. A Gantt chart that shows, say, what to, what kind of uh, activity to perform within one year, one year of 12 months, okay? Um, and you have several activities, uh, consultation and planning, review of literature, questionnaire design, questionnaire pre-testing, field work and data collection, data analysis and write-up. Now, um, the first, the first, uh, the first assignment responsibility is supposed to be carried out in one year, con con consultations and planning in one year. Then review of literature, sorry, sorry, excuse me, no, in one month. <laughs> Uh, the second assignment is uh, a review of literature in the first two months. A questionnaire design between the second and third month. Questionnaire pre-testing between the fourth and sixth month. And field work and data collection between the seventh month and tenth month. And then data analysis and write-up between the 11th and 12th month. I have decided to use uh, different colors to show the spread and the distribution of uh, the time uh, on uh, each of these uh, uh, responsibilities. Um, ordinarily, I can put, you can use this black for all of them, but I've used different colors to illustrate these, these different 
studies to guide the students so that you don't dwell so much. You don't dwell so much on a particular activity to to and eat deep into the other activity with the result that at, at, at a stage you don't have time for the next activities. Now um, on the uh, on uh, column graphs, for instance, I, I have illustrated here with a, a stacked a stacked uh, bar chart. A stacked bar chart on the uh, uh, matrix scores and then uh, a statistical a statistical. Uh, scores in statistics. You will see that. Uh, you will see that in the uh, match matrix score, of course, uh, it lies ahead of the the score in statistics, but this this chart can be separated. I mean, you can use a different separated uh, bar charts in which you plot this side by side instead of uh, on 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 the same on the same column it's side put side by side and you can even uh, go to the option of data set numbering label label data set they put the the these numbers on top of the different uh, bars as the case may be Line charts, of course, we are all familiar with line charts and uh, and then um, again it shows the, the different scores uh, in, in in line chart, which we, it, but it's always good for the researcher to determine which which uh, which type of uh, presentation suits him or her best. Uh, uh, in histogram, you can also use a histogram to, to this time you, you, you are looking at the volume under the curve. Here I've, I've used an example of uh, of uh, amount of maybe amount of food consumed by uh, by age classes. Um, an a priori assumption is that the younger one is, the less one consumed food up to a stage. And it increases with age, up to uh, up to a certain age, and beyond that age, the the law of diminishing return might set in, and then uh, the the older the person is, the less food the person consumes, and this this can be this is depicted uh, on this graph, the age age classes. The where age classes one to ten, ten to twenty, twenty to thirty, down to greater than ninety, and uh, you can see the age, uh, the the class interval here is ten. That is the class interval is ten, so that um, you have the distribution of age. Uh, on the horizontal axis and the distribution of uh, quantity consumed in kilograms on the vertical y axis, x axis on the age class. And the, the second, the second graph, uh, uh, second histogram says shows the point of shows the point of inflection that is where at age is 60, age 40 to 50 is uh, the point adults consume uh, more food beyond more food with 
greater quantity of food with age. Beyond that, they now could begin to consume less with increase in age. And um, this is a point of uh, this is the point the uh, uh, diminution return sets in and 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 so on and so forth. I would. Now, um, with these, th those, those were descriptive statistics, and descriptive statistics are still quantitative methods. Um, but the more precise quantitative methods are the analytical. To me, are the uh, analytical methods. Uh, 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 um, infer uh, inferential stat using infra in inferential statistics. Um, for example, well, the, uh, the, there's, these are still uh, uh, averages, medians, percentages, graphs, histograms are still descriptive statistics, but still quantitative. Analysis of variance is inferential statistics. Um, we'll deal with that uh, soon. Correlation matrix, regression analysis, uh, et cetera, et cetera, simple and multiple. And um, we are you to the second part of the presentation. Um, the, the analysis of variance uh, for for social scientists, uh, for social scientists, is sometimes it is not, it's not an easy thing um, to conceptualize. Um, but the good news, the good news is that um, the technology has made it such that the uh, analytical packages uh, crank out. Um, uh, analysis of variance, even from 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 non biological non biological experiments. Otherwise, the analy uh, analysis of variance is purely always um, a, more of a biological analysis. I will show. I will illustrate in the next page. In the next page, a table of uh, uh, treatments and um, treatments are supplied to uh, certain subjects that is um, either blocks as the case may be. Now, correlation matrix is, tries to show the relationship between uh, variables, uh, both explanatory and explained variables. Um, I, I will say more about that when we get uh, to the next page. Uh, regression analysis is actually the, if you like, the be all and end all. Allow me to use that uh, for for statistical analysis, especially for social scientists these days, um, in which. Uh, in which uh, you may have a simple regression in which you have determined, like I, I have said, researchers have a duty to understand what they want to do and how they want to do it. The intricacies of the statistical method or the or, or the academic uh, uh, aspects or the parameters and variables uh, is now left to statisticians. And then, of course, the good, the good thing is that the, most of these things are now um, compiled in packages that one can uh, apply and, uh, uh, and use. Um, so in regression analysis, we have a simple regression where you have determined that 
there is only one thing, one variable that predicts your dependent variable and does so very accurately. That's when you embark on a simple regression. But most cases, it is assumed that there are more than one variable, that more than one variable do contribute to predicting or explaining a dependent variable. Hence, a multiple regression is applied. Now, uh, historically, it has been it has been proven or it has been argued that a simple regressions are more accurate than multiple regressions. A simple regression is more accurate. Um, I think uh, I, I my take on this is that when unless the researcher is very sure that no other variable can can um, contribute to predicting the dependent variable then th that is the only one very variable if if a researcher determines that that a, a, a performance in mathematics is gender based that we know that uh, girls they, uh, used to run away from mathematics and 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 therefore a researcher can say that uh, performance in mathematics is uh, is gender based it is more 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 boys or boys do better in mathematics than girls in that case he uses a, a he uses only uh, sex uh, that is uh, gender as his his or her explanatory variable in that case he can now say um performance y is equal to uh, b not plus uh, x x1 b1 plus e e is an error term in that case he is saying no other no other variable explains performance better better than uh, uh, the 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 sex of the child whether it's a male or a female but some others might say no that there, there are some other variables um, which in addition to the sex of the child there could be uh, the the school the the child attends the upbringing, the the early child, out, out early child education of the child, whether the child went to preschool or went to has a extra moral studies or, or some kind of. With that, he he or she runs a multiple regression. Um, the choice of any of these will depend very much on the assurance the researcher gets on the contribution or the effect of the dependent variables. Now look at look at the um, statistical. Looking at the statistical uh, analysis, the analysis of variance, for instance. We we see here that uh, it is a, a randomized a randomized block design where you have four blocks and three treatments with a control as a default treatment so you list the blocks on the on the columns vertical on the columns and then the treatments on the on the rows so you have cells uh, 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 as uh, expressed in this uh, form, uh, V11, V12 extract, or V11 to V1, uh, V41, counting from the rows. With this, um, like I said before, um, 
the computer simply just the the researcher researcher simply feeds the information to the computer. The computer will ask what are the the, the set of dependent uh, treatments. You show treatment one. Treatment two, you enter. Treatment three, you enter. And then uh, maybe it will ask you for blocks. You enter blocks one to four and so on. And then uh, you you uh, you now run the model. It gives you uh, the you it gives you the 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 coefficients that are significant at the given levels of a probability and so on and so forth and then you write up and so on. these days matters have been made easy for uh, for researchers in the sense that uh, uh, authors have uh, produced books and produced uh, statistical packages for for uh, analysis of this uh, analysis of these uh, um, these variables if i if i go back to the multiple regression analysis the good thing about the multiple regression and the good is the good news about the multiple regression analysis is the fact that there is what the a package called the statistical package for social scientists SPSS has the ability to has the ability to do a stepwise regression stepwise regression is that I mentioned uh, uh, or the single uh, simple regression that the researcher knows with accuracy that only one variable explains the dependent variable. But when it is not certain that only one variable is responsible for the contribution for predicting the dependent variable, a multiple regression is applied in which so many dependent variables can be fathomed or can be it can be speculated, may be contributing to explaining or to predicting the dependent variable. The SPSS has become so useful that it now al allows a stepwise regression. Stepwise in the sense that it allows you to introduce the, the explanatory variables one by one. Um, Sim, sim, first, sing, a single regression. Second, a multiple regression with two variables. Third, a multiple regression with three variables, up to as many variables as the researcher may have thought about. And now it prints out the results, and the best result is then ch ch chosen as the model to, to use in predicting the dependent variable. Best result in terms of looking at the R square, that is the regression uh, the reg regression coefficient. But we will get we will get to that uh, ne ne next. That I'm, I'm trying to um, a <clears throat> announce the good news of uh, the, the facility called the stepwise regression that helps uh, help that helps the researcher determine how many explanatory variables he can fit into the model and uh, get a, a perfect model that can be used for prediction. Now, um, a, a correlation matrix, the correlation matrix R small R representing a, a, <clears throat> is a measure of the linear relationship between two variables. Correlation matrix is therefore the symmetric values of the correlation coefficient of different variables with one another. Value of one represents perfect positive correlation. Value of minus one represents perfect negative correlation. Um, value of, let me go back to value of positive, positive um, 
perfect correlation. Require it says that uh, um, uh, uh, the amount of food consumed is directly proportional to the height or weight, if you like, to the weight of a child. If there is a coefficient of uh, uh, one, it means that there is no other way that is a, a child being overweight or a child being very heavy is because of the amount of food that child consumes or a child being very tall is because of the amount of food that child uh, um, eats. In other words, the more, the more food the child eats, the taller he or she becomes, or the more food the child is, the heavier the child becomes. That's, that's perfect uh, correlation. Now, um, negative correlation is the reverse. The reverse is, um, um, well, maybe not in this, in this case. Um, the, the more food a child is, the less the child sleeps at night. In, in other words, he's saying that in, in eating too much makes a child childless at night. So that's a positive negative correlation. Now, a value of a value of zero represents no correlation. Eating too much has nothing to do with a child waking up in the middle of the night or eating too much it has nothing to do, it does not add to the weight of the child. For ease of interpretation, research method assign probabilities to the coefficients. For example, when a coefficient, when a, when a coefficient has a star against it, it means it, 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 it represents a significant that uh, that co co coefficient is significant at five percent level of probability. Oh, sorry, sorry, one one star ten percent level of probability, two stars five percent probability level, and three stars one percent level of probability. Or if, in other words, there is ninety nine point. 99%, there's 99% nine, certainty that this will happen for three stars, or 95% sure that that, that uh, occurrence or that relationship exists, or 90% as the case may be, if it's a one star, and so on and so forth. So that in the uh, in the in the correlation matrix, which which uh, the computer plots for you, the good thing about regression analysis, apart from the fact that the computer will ask you to enter a, a, a particular level of treatment, enter another level, etc., enter block, and so on, the, it 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 asks you for options to print for you. For, for instance, the correlation matrix, the F value, the regression, uh, uh, the regression uh, co coefficient R squared, and then uh, the adjusted, et cetera, et cetera. So that your job is simply, like I mentioned before, your job is to know what to do. And the computer will do the, it, it will do the dirty job for you. The cranking out so that it's left for you to understand what is happening or what each variable or each parameter represents to be able to interpret your result accurately. Table four shows uh, uh, the, the correlation matrix. And uh, if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, the, the cell C11, it means the correlation between sex and, and sex. That means it will be one, one. 
and the qualification between qualification will be one C two two, and the score between score will be C three three. So that's diagonal. The they they represent perfect correlation one 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 throughout. Then in be to the left and to the right are the coefficients that show either positive or negative, but not perfect correlation. So um, like C12, C13, C, uh, C23, etc., or C31 and so on, are uh, uh, correlations, are correlations that uh, show non-perfect correlation, but uh, positive or negative as the case may be. Unfortunately, uh, no negative is shown here. But here, if you look at uh, qualification on the sex uh, column, you see a value of C21, C21 with two stars. And then if you look down again, you see a score against sex, a value of C31. If you go further, you see score against uh, qualification C32. Now, on C on C on on C21 plus that has two plus, it means that the there is five percent five percent probability that qualification and, and sex are related is significant. That coefficient is significant at 5%. That means that there is 5% probability that there is a direct relationship between sex, direct positive relationship between sex and qualification. Also down to um, C31 that has three stars. It means that there is one percent. One percent is a um, level of probability that there is a, a positive relationship between score and the sex. In other words, it is highly. It is highly significant. Three stars means it is highly significant. Um, two stars means it is significant. And one star means it is just significant, but all of them are positive and they show high probabilities. Anything less, anything less uh, is ignored. It, it, does, it doesn't indicate because it is not significant. If it's not significant at 10, 5, 1 or 1, 5, 10, it is not significant at all and cannot be used for any predictive or any, for any useful inference. That's what it means. So it has to be highly significant, three stars or very, very significant, two stars or significant one star as the case may be. Now, the regression analysis as another quantitative method of uh, uh, prediction. First, a simple regression model can be expressed as y is equal to b0 plus b1 x1 plus e e1. Whereas a multiple regression is expressed as y i equals b0 plus b1 i j x1 i j plus b2 j plus x2 j plus that 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 all the way to b n k x n k plus e i. The generalized form of this multiple regression equation is y i Yi is equal to B0 plus summation Ij, Xij plus Ei, where I runs from 1 to N and the J runs from 1 to K. The interpretations are that B0 
is an intercept on the y axis. That is, if you if you fit a regression line, if you fit a regression line based on the ordinary least square estimates (OLS), the the deviations the deviations from the fitted line, the ordinary least square estimate tries to minimize the sum of squares of the deviations from the observed data set and the predicted uh, value, which is represented by the regression line. So this B naught is an intercept, which this line, this regression line makes on the Y axis. That is the, the effect, the effect on Y axis when no variable, none of the BIs has been, none of the XIs has been fitted into the model. I, I, I don't know, I, I put it, I, 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 I make that statement again, or I repeat that statement. B naught is the intercept on the Y axis, which represents the effect on the, on Y, the predicted uh, uh, variable, when no explanatory variable has been fitted into the model, okay? The BIJ represents the regression coefficient for the, for the height row of the J column. The XIJ is the predictor, that is the explanatory variable or independent variable value for the i-th row for the j column. And the I, EI is the error term or stochastic factor, which is a variable that is, uh, which is determined by a variable not the, that is not included in the model. Um, I, 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 I don't expect students I don't expect students to begin to crank out these values, but for them to understand what these values mean, what they stand for, because the computer does the calculation these days, uh, but you need to understand what is going on. The, the decision variables, when, when you have run this, when you have run this mo uh, model, uh, which means, uh, the responding to the computer asking you to include uh, uh, enter the dependent variables for uh, explanatory enter the values for explanatory variable one enter values for expl explanatory variable two etc depending on the number of uh, ex explanatory variables and like i've mentioned before the stepwise will go through using all the variables and, and then by looking at the R square here, you will now know which one has predicted the, the dependent variable best. And then you choose that one as your chosen model. Now the statistics uh, use as uh, the, the, the decision variables include the F, value which uh, shows whether the equation as a whole is statistically is statistically significant in explaining the dependent variable y r squared the it represents the proportion of the variance in the values of the dependent variables y explained by all the independent variables in the x's in the equation together. The adjusted R squares, R to adjust, is when a correlation has been made, when a correction has been made to reflect the number of variables in the equation. That is, it is due to, it, it, it is that, that first R value R squared value now at uh, taking cognizance of the number of variables 
included, that is the number of explanatory variables included in the model. It is normally because, because it means that these, vari these explanatory variables take on the fitness of the model. The R squared adjusted is normally slightly less than the R squared. The T statistics is the probability level, and uh, it's, it's all again shown in stars by uh, by set of uh, packages. Others will simply pr print out the value and then the, the probability level, and then you you now the researcher now determines at what level of probability, either ten percent, five percent, or one percent that uh, that particular coefficient is significant. Otherwise, the T statistics could be reported as probability values, and the researcher will then determine, as I'm just saying, at what level of probability or confidence the coefficients are significant. The example. Um, Suppose we take a random sample of 10 students in a first year sociology class. We want to assess whether they, their scores in statistics are influenced by their gender, male or female, their matrix score and, and level of uh, education of their mother. We want to investigate whether there will be any significant difference in their scores in the first year statistics examination based on the three factors or variables mentioned. So we, we, now, uh, we now do what we have mentioned. The, for the male, female, we put use the dummy variable. For the level of education of their mother, we use one for first degree, two for uh, second degree and three for third degree, and we run the regression and we get say this is hypothetical. It is not based on any any uh, uh, empirical data. So you have estimated y being equal to being equal to that um, 0 0.45 gender plus 5.2 metric and plus 0.057 mother's education. And then you have in parentheses uh, the the probabilities are in, uh, the probabilities are in, in parentheses. Um, now, if they are in parentheses, the first one, the gender is is uh, significant at ten percent. Matric is significant at at. Uh, at uh, one percent because it's, it's point oh 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 five, okay. So the R squared now looks at is point uh, eight nine seven five. R two adjusted comes down to point six nine five five. Where so you the the R square the rule of thumb is that R square should be at least. 0.5 percent. So this is highly, highly uh, 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 suitable, suitable model for predicting the the performance of a child based on these three dependent explanatory variables. Um, the the seven 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 point nine is the B0, which I showed in the generic equation. Uh, the intercept on the y-axis. The probability of the significance of the coefficients of the independent variables are put in parentheses. This I have already uh, uh, explained. Now, um, it's always good as a researcher to indicate what the limitations of the study are. Limitations in terms of the scope covered the, uh, in terms of uh, technology applied, in terms of resources, and uh, maybe resources of both money and time. For instance, we, we have here 
scope of coverage of the investigation, bottlenecks and the constraints uh, due to maybe finances and time, skills and uh, resource limitations like the technology, etc., cetera, or, uh, or the software in this, in this modern era. Based on this, the researcher can offer suggestions regarding the direction that future research investigations might follow. Now, conclusion. The conclusion should reflect on or be based on the findings of the research study. This is uh, for a For example, the researcher can con conclude that performance in a numeracy class, such as statistics, is more determined by performance in metric more than the sex or level of education of the of the student's mother. You know, so the conclusion was derived from the study. You, you don't go and bring what has been bugging your mind about something related to your study that has not been covered in the study and bring it as a conclusion. You can, you can mention that as a, a recommendation, but not conclusion. One important thing to note is that conclusions are never summaries. The conclusion is not a summary. A summary will start from A, from point A, from introduction down to the conclusion. But the conclusion uh, summarizes what has been discovered or what has been, uh, what has been uh, undertaken on that specific study. Recommendations are important after research as a guide for one, the way forward, uh, the, uh, it guides in policy making. It also points out areas that might need further investigations, uh, ways of improving the present or future work, and sources of support, e.g. finance, skills, and technology, as the case may be. Now, this is another very important aspect of research where plagiarism is affected. Uh, um, I mean, where plagiarism can be done without sometimes inadvertently. Uh, and then, of course, um, the references need to be listed because when people refer to your work, they also want to know uh, <clears throat> some other authors that have done some work related to your, to your own work. So references are very, very, <clears throat> excuse me, are very, very important. Um, we look at methods of referencing. Methods of referencing are quite many, and the one to adopt will be determined by institu the institutional preferences, publishers, or that is the, what the publishers want to do, like to do, or what their policy is, either book publishers or journal publishers, and what the author finds more convenient. Sometimes it is <coughs> the convenience of the author that also determines which <coughs> referencing method to, to adopt. Generally, the author date or Harvard or Cambridge system of uh, referencing seems to be the more widely adopted, e.g., take, take for instance, Mandela 1994. At least, uh, if you want to cite um, what uh, the father of the nation, uh, Nelson Mandela mentioned, uh, did or said in 1994 when South Africa had the independence. 
He said, so you say Nelson Mandela, of course, the last name is normally the, the one cited. 1994, at, the, as, assuming, at his assuming office as the first black president of independent South Africa, stated that South Africa belongs to all citizens, irrespective of their skin color. Alternatively, the statement can be cited as South Africa belongs to all citizens, irrespective of their skin color. Mandela, 1994. You see here, if you have made the statement uh, and put the author behind, then it is the author's last name, comma, and the year of publication. If it is that you are mentioning the author before you mention what he said, then it is the author and then the date in parentheses. And you, you <coughs> again, uh, remember that you have to paraphrase, use your own words in, in, in most cases uh, to when you are quoting the <coughs> when you when you are quoting the author to avoid plagiarism. If you use the exact words, if you use the exact words without with <coughs> without putting the exact statement in parentheses, then you are guilty of plagiarism. You have to use paraphrase or use your own words, but uh, but uh, projecting the very statement the author made. Another form of citing references in the in the use of is the use of Arabic numerals to number the references in a sequential and systematic manner. For example, to cite Mandela and other authors of separate articles will be of the form South Africa belongs to all citizens irrespective of their skin color. One super super uh, superscript one. In this, in, in his defense on the state, that's another author now, in his defense on the state capture saga, the presidency reported that personal relationships have always been divorced from business of the nation. Superscript 2. In the, in the list of references, the authors are listed in alphabetical order. Mandela, Nelson, 1994, South African Independent Pre Independence Presidential Inaugural Address, Department of Foreign Affairs Bulletin, <coughs> uh, for Department of Foreign Affairs Pretoria, number of pages, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> Now look at the look at the uh, that particular uh, citation. The the title is put uh, in in most cases if it is if it is um, uh, a monograph or journal paper, the, it is the first letter that is uh, capitalized. In, in this case, I. Uh, is the first letter that is cap capitalized South Africa in, in uh, South African um, independence. This should this uh, this was should have been um, lower cases like the address. Okay, now the publisher, if it is a journal, is written in italics. Department of Foreign Affairs. Bulletin. It's, it's written in italics. Then the place it is published, Pretoria, and then the page. If it's a book, if it is more like a book, it is uh, put in in uh, parenthesis. Uh, excuse me. You put page first, and then the the number of pages two to six. Yeah, um, the reason why, the, let me go back to that. The reason why South African Independence uh, 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 Presidential inaug Inaugural 
is in a, it is a that should have been capital because it is a book and uh, if it is a book it's either you put the titles in italics or you put the first letters in capital letters so that's why uh, south african independence presidential inaugural and a address should have been in capital letters and then the author if it is a journal you have to write or in this case the department of foreign affairs is the author a bulletin is the author you put it in italics you put the place um in the indicated that which is town not a country not south africa but pretoria the city where it was published and then the page numbers if it is a book comes before the p comes before the number of pages um now in 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 the in the other one if it is it is zuma jacob the year of publishing is uh, 2017 sometimes some uh, some publishers uh, want you to put the date in parentheses some others just want you to put them out there now um state capture debate again it is this is treated uh, um, the, the the cap the title is state capture debate and the the publisher is parliamentary proceedings is published in cape town now uh, because it is a section of a collected uh, volume you put the pages where that this particular article comes in so, so you put double p p p pages uh to 22 to 45 uh, in this case, th that same applies also to journals, mostly in journals where the uh, the article you are referencing is a, one of the collections of uh, articles in a particular volume of a journal. Uh, in that case, you put the volume, the volume number, the volume, the number, and then the pages where it uh, appears PP so so date to i mean so so page to so so page in the numbering option the list of references will be listed as follows one mandela two zuma and 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 and, and so on when the same author is cited in a different article then the name may not be repeated but should be cited as follows for the author and date style is mandela nelson 1994 south african independence presidential inaugural address department of foreign affairs etc etc then the next time it is it is same mandela nelson 2017 you will now just put a line and put the 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 title uh, the title for that particular new new publication by the same author you, you don't just, you don't repeat the name of the author for the numbering style you again use uh, mandela that um two it is the same mandela you then put a beat uh, 2017 and uh, three, you don't have to, um, if it is the same, if another citation is from the same article that like, uh, uh, the, like it is from this same article, then you simply put both the, to cover the page, a bit page 33, as the case may be. I think, this is uh, basically what it's all about. Um, and, and you see evidence of some knowledge of statistics, some knowledge of research, and some knowledge of technical research, uh, technical writing, all put together to guide the researcher 
uh, the student in, in his research methodology uh, approach to learning how to conduct some research. Thank you.